Good afternoon, my name is Jason and I'm going to be reviewing Dehancer. Dehancer is a plugin for various video editors like DaVinci Resolve and it's also for photo editors like Lightroom and Capture One Pro. I'll just be reviewing Dehancer for DaVinci Resolve. I do need to state that although what I'm about to say is my true opinion, the Dehancer team did give me a license so that I could review this plugin. What is Dehancer? Dehancer is a plugin that applies tone curve, color, and other effects so that you can achieve accurate film simulations. And it's quite comprehensive. You can do as little as apply a film simulation or add all the effects together to reproduce the effects of your favorite motion picture. While I'm talking, I'm also going to apply Dehancer to this footage so that you can see what the effects are. Once Dehancer is installed, you can apply it to a clip, an adjustment clip, or even use it on the color page. I'm only going to be applying it to clips in this review, but keep in mind that if you apply it to the color page using nodes, you can achieve even more finely grained effects. Once Dehancer is applied to a clip, you'll get a panel of settings in the Effects tab of the Inspector. This gives you a bunch of basic adjustment sliders, such as exposure and white balance. As a photographer, I find these exposure adjustments rather intuitive compared to using the color page, which is a little bit different than the way most raw editors work. This single panel gives you all the effects you'll need to achieve an accurate film simulation. With the Hanser, you can also use a variety of footage sources. You can use a clip that's already in Rec. 709 color space, or you can use log footage. You can also select log footage from a specific camera. Now here I noticed that the list of cameras was a bit limited. For example, they have the Panasonic GH5 and the GH5S, but they don't have the GH6. And since the GH6 is a fairly upgraded camera from the GH5 and GH5S, the log footage from the GH6 might look a little different. So it would have been nice to have some of these other cameras in this list. I also noticed that they don't have many of Panasonic's other full frame cameras, which are also very capable video cameras. Now probably if your camera is not supported like the GH6, you could select the closest camera in the list and probably achieve a fairly good effect. The fun with the Hanser starts with the film profiles. Dehancer says that there are 63 film emulation profiles in this list, and that looks about right. These film profiles are based on actual films, and they're supposed to give you a good starting point for creating an accurate film simulation. On the one hand, these profiles give an excellent starting point for film simulation, but on the other hand, some of these are quite easy to emulate in the color page. Here's a quick grade I did to try and emulate the Kodak Ektachrome E100 in the film emulation list. I think I got pretty close, and I only spent two minutes on it, so I think if you spent more time, you could probably simulate a lot of these film simulation plugins. Nonetheless, I think it would be quite tedious to simulate them all. And if you're doing a lot of color grading, it's still faster to use some of these presets. There's another reason why these film simulations are useful, and that is they can be applied directly to log footage. That means you can go straight from your log footage to a film simulation without worrying about applying a lot in the color page. Thus, if you are working with log footage, Dehancer provides a nice alternative to applying random LUTs or node-based solutions, which can be very nice for beginners who just want to make a movie. But the film profiles are only the starting point of Dehancer. After film simulation, there's a tool called film compression. Now, this tool basically compresses a portion of your highlights. This is something that you can also achieve by manipulating the tone curve. The main advantage of this tool over the tone curve is that it's convenient. However, playing with both the film compression and the tone curve, I still prefer DaVinci's tone curve over the film compression. So if you're going for a very specific compression look, you might still want to use the tone curve even if you are using Dehancer. The expand tool allows you to modify the black and white points of your video. To be honest, I didn't see much difference between using the expand tool over the tone curve again when trying to achieve a similar look except that apparently the modification of these black and white points happens at the application of the profile, the film profile, rather than afterwards, like as if you were to apply a LUT and then a tone curve. So in theory, it might give you more accurate or more pleasing results, although personally I couldn't see a difference in the two. There's another tool called the print tool. It is basically like an exposure tool and a contrast tool with some color modifiers like saturation and range. There's also a color head tool, which is like a split toning tool and allows you to modify the hue and color of the shadows and highlights. 
After these tools, we get into the grain feature. Now you might be asking, doesn't DaVinci Resolve already have a grain tool? In fact, if you go to the Fusion page, you can see that there are two grain tools that DaVinci Resolve offers. There's the film grain and the regular grain tool. Is the grain tool in Dehancer different than these two built-in grain tools of DaVinci Resolve? Well, I tried to test both of these built-in grain tools of DaVinci Resolve against Dehancer's grain tool. I first tried the film grain that DaVinci Resolve offers, and I found that the film grain tool looks a little strange. By default, and even trying to modify the settings, I found that DaVinci Resolve's film grain tool adds a fairly unusual static looking, a sort of staticky pattern in the highlights, which wasn't very pleasing. And so just comparing the film grain tool of DaVinci Resolve and Dehancer, I think Dehancer looked a lot better. I also tried DaVinci Resolve's regular grain tool. And there I found that the, the grain tool in DaVinci Resolve applied grain more to the shadows and not so much to the midtones and highlights. Whereas comparing DaVinci Resolve's tools to Dehancer, I found that Dehancer's grain tool provided a fairly uniform film-like grain as opposed to DaVinci Resolve's grain tool. So I think in terms of grain, I actually feel that Dehancer did a much better job, at least with its default settings. Now, the grain tools in DaVinci Resolve do have quite a few settings, but I could never really get the grain in DaVinci Resolve to look as good as Dehancer's. So I think I was, I was kind of confused at first why Dehancer even had a grain tool, but I think its grain tool is much better than using the stock tools of DaVinci Resolve. Now, what is halation? Halation is a very specific effect which applies a kind of haloing or a red-orange aberration, sort of a chromatic aberration to the very bright areas of an image. I can't really comment on how well it compares to actual film, but I think if you want to be really authentic and the film source you're trying to emulate had halation in it, then it's a good tool to use. Bloom is very easy to explain. It adds a soft glow around the brightest areas of your footage. It's a defect that was common in film and there are plenty of controls so that you can make it exactly how you want it. The vignette module works very similar to the built-in vignette module of DaVinci Resolve. I think you can achieve pretty much the same look with both of them. Personally, I don't really like either of these tools. I prefer to add vignette using a mask and the tone curve because then you can control how exactly the vignetted portion darkens based on tones. But I think if you want a very quick vignette, you can use the panel in Dehancer or you could use the built-in tool of DaVinci Resolve. It's just more convenient probably to use the one in Dehancer if you're using the other effects of Dehancer. There are two more tools in Dehancer, that is Gate Weave and Film Breathing or Film Breath. So what is Film Breath? Film Breath is a periodic modulation of color, contrast, and tone across different frames because film, or at least some films, weren't completely uniform. And so if you had some part of a film that was more sensitive in certain ways, then you would be able to see this modulation across time. And this effect allows you to do that. It's pretty cool and it does look like some films. And I think if you've seen a lot of movies shot on film, you might have seen this effect before. The final tool is Gate Weave. Gate Weave is the motion of the picture that is caused by the movement of the film through a projector or other display device. So as you can see, Dehancer has quite a lot of tools to try and make footage look more like film. So what are some of the pros and cons of this plugin? I think the pro is basically that it provides a very intuitive and easy to use tool set all in one place so that you could emulate film. I also like the fact that this plugin comes with a large set of film emulations so you can have a good starting point. You choose something that you look, like the look of and then you can tweak it and make it look even more interesting. Now, the biggest con of this plugin is probably that it's a little slow in some places. Now, in some cases, that's expected. If you're gonna add grain to your footage, grain is a fairly intensive effect to add. Even if you use the stock grain effect of DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna experience slowdown, especially if you're not working on a very fast computer. However, I also noticed that this plugin slows down playback even when none of the effects are applied, which I find a little bit strange. So I think uh, this plugin could be optimized a little bit more for speed in the future. And of course, if your computer is a little slow and you're experiencing slow playback, you can also use 
uh, render in place to make your footage faster. Of course, then you can't modify the effects until you revert back to the original clip. Nonetheless, I think in most cases, you probably won't have too much difficulty unless you're shooting very intensive footage like 8K footage on an incapable computer. So, should you get Dehancer? That's a very good question. I think it's hard to choose the right tool for the right job. I think if you are always going for a film-like effect and you're grading a ton of footage all the time, I think Dehancer could be worthwhile. On the other hand, if you're just looking for some film like color effects, in other words, just color grading only, like what you could achieve with the tone curve and the color wheels of DaVinci Resolve, then I think you should take a close look and compare what you can achieve with Dehancer compared to what you can achieve with the color tools in DaVinci Resolve, because the color tools in DaVinci Resolve are fairly powerful. So you might be able to achieve the look you want just using the built-in tools of DaVinci Resolve and some of the effects maybe in the Fusion page. And on that topic, I really think it makes the most sense to work with log footage because this plugin does give you an alternative to just applying a lot and then using the color tools of DaVinci Resolve. And so in that sense, it can make your workflow a lot faster. Of course, even if you're not shooting in log, you can still use Dehancer. And in that case, it makes the most sense to work with the flattest profile that your camera provides. I have one final comment. I'm not an expert in film. Although I've seen quite a few movies shot on film, I can't really comment with an astute eye on how accurate Dehancer really is. It looks good to my eyes, and I guess that's all I can say. I hope you enjoyed this review of Dehancer. As a wildlife videographer, I'm not likely to apply a lot of film simulations to my wildlife footage. Nonetheless, I enjoyed playing with this plugin, and I thank the Dehancer team for the opportunity to review it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.